Ladies and gentlemen, friends of mine, friends of yours, put your hands together. No drink at all. Alright, so. Oh, just the tip, that's not us, there we go. So, I played without shoes, and the last time I was here, I cut myself up. And I was bleeding. So I said, well, fuck it, I'm, I'm gonna bring my own rug. Look, hey, shit, I also need a rug up here. Anyways, I brought my own rug. I'm like, oh, that's a good job thinking Dan Dismal. So then I wear pants. And I'm like, shit, I either have to bring them up or uh, find shorts. And then I'm like, oh, I got shorts in my fucking car. So then I go down to my car. And I'm like, shit, there's no shorts down there. So I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Earlier, if you didn't see it, I took my pants down over there. And I was like, hey. He was there, I was like, hey, does this look good enough? They're like, no, don't do that. And I was like, hey, but the thing is, it's like, nothing, absolutely nothing is going to come out of the shorts. Because I'm like, you know, like, shit, well, nothing's going to come from the bottom or through the side. I'm like, this, this, fuck it. It's good enough to pee, fuck it. So then I was like, all right, they're like, no, Dan Dismal, don't do it. So I'm like, shit. So I went down the street on a mission. They have a hip-hop show down there. Actually pretty good. Not trap, not bullshit hip-hop. Pretty good hip-hop. I love hip-hop. So I go down there, I'm like, yeah, sup, sucker? Yeah, yeah. So then this guy is leaving, and I'm like, hey, you're, you're like my size. That. So uh, let me count on them shorts. So he's like, yeah, well, yeah, well, my boss, like, I'll give you fucking 50 bucks if you give me them goddamn shorts. Luckily, the guy from the Lexington's like, dang, he's pretty fucking serious. So the guy's like, well, I'm going home. So he pulls them off, he's got his underwear on. So I'm wearing some random dude's fucking shorts from the fucking Lexington. So me being the fucking, weird, me being the dude that just doesn't really care, I come up and, uh, Once I uh, come back up here, I'm telling some people outside, I drop my pants again outside and tell them why I had to do this. And then I take the shorts, put them upside down, and take the crotch and put it to my nose, and then sniff it. And I'm like, this motherfucker has some pretty fucking clean nuts. So with that being said, we're a crematorium from Los Angeles, California. We haven't practiced in a long time, and it's my birthday, and I got strep throat, and I probably can't sing, but fuck it. I went out, and I bought a pair of shorts from some random dude, and put his sweaty fucking nuts right in my face, and I know when I smelled him that he and I are bent together. This first song goes out to him and his big ass nuts. It's called Parasitic.
Yeah, turn up the guitar. Hey, how you guys all feeling? Yeah. 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 No. Fucking no. <laughs> you see hey. this fucking thing right here? Hey, excuse me, Dan. Hey. Uh, I got a message that they said to turn up the guitar. Yeah, yeah, we're good. I, I don't, I'm not micing anything. Hey, guitar, turn it up. So, once again, I ask how you guys are doing. I just turned 43. 390 pounds. Look at that. Go on a diet. Don't eat high fructose corn syrup. Potatoes! Oh yeah, and uh, my whole thing, everybody doesn't like a potato. I will tell you one thing, at 43 years old, and even though tonight is a benefit for the fact that in the past 18 years of being in church in AMD, I have not charged a band high taxes or any taxes. I will say that a venue like the Five Star Bar does not come back towards a promoter and, and uh, give us taxes. So the fact that venues like this actually keep the scene going. So when everyone's like, oh shit, Dan, this one keeps it going, blah, blah, blah. No. Venues are what keeps it going. So give it up to the Five Star Bar. Because I'm telling you right now, Dan Dismal would not be shit without four walls to put a show in. So, the tax thing came about because I have been doing bigger shows and I have been charging people taxes and now I'm learning it. Fuck it. Everyone's got to grow up at some point. But, I'm going to still continue doing small shows like this and not charging the small bands. And at some point, if I ever have to fucking call it a day, I will pass it on to someone else, or I'll become Church of the Night Day. So this is a this is a song actually that has to do with ripples within your life when you do things that are stupid and you go out there and cause wars and cause everything like that. There's a thing that's called a wake. And where we live right now in such a different side, you're either here or there. A lot of people got to realize that you're all full of shit. Social justice warriors and frost, frost fuckers and all that shit saying don't say this anymore. Fuck you. People that are out there are fucking on the Trump side who are being fucking racist and calling people spicks and shit like that. Fuck them. I told a story last time when we played here that fucking got me in a lot of trouble. When we played in the Midwest, and some guy came up to me, and we said, we're sitting there looking at him, and I said, well, how's the scene out here? And he said, everything's fucking great, everything's good, but we got some problems. I said, what problems is that? And he said, there's a lot of niggers out here. And he looked at our fucking bass player and said, but you're okay. Last time I played here, everyone was like, how dare you say that word? How dare you fucking have the audacity? And I got in a lot of trouble. And I tell them, how dare you not? How dare you not raise awareness? If someone's gonna come up to somebody that you love and look at them in the face and say something like that, fuck them. Stand up for yourself. Remember that words hurt. If someone's gonna say nigger, someone's gonna say Jew, spit, whatever the fuck it is, hold to yourself. There's no fucking reason to fucking censor that fucking shit. Remember, there's only one class. Social justice warriors and all the bullshit that they're going through and telling me, no, oh, fuck that. And then Trump people that are over here and say, I believe in everything our fucking president does. And then there's the people in the middle. And that's where I reside. 
fuck you on this side telling me that I can't tell you a story about how some fucking cockstucker motherfucker in Oklahoma called some guy who fuck was on the road with me for fucking 400 fucking days fucking surviving with me and he looks at him in his face and says fuck you nigger fuck him and on the other side with these fucking Trump people telling me that I'm gonna send everyone back fuck you get the fuck out remember keep an open mind stop the hate Keep your fucking breath. Freedom of speech is not freedom of stupidity. Remember that. This song has to do with that. Everything you fucking do in your life is about how you affect other people. We are all one people. Remember that. White, black, big dick, small dick, transgender, whatever the fuck it is. We are all one fucking people. This is Bloodway. seen crematorium before? Yeah. How many of you guys have seen us multiple times? Yeah. A lot of people have always told me, hey Ben, you talk too much. There's like 20 minutes of music and 20 minutes of you. And then I went and saw like Pantera. Or I went and saw a Super Drone Ritual. And I was like, hey, Phil Ensemble talks a lot, but all he ever says is, Hey brothers, so why I can read your heavy music? Fuck it. The one thing that I always talk about is the fact that I'm a political guy. You know me as a person, I like to jump. I like to talk a lot of shit. I believe in giving myself out there. If I was five foot, I would get my ass beat all the time. The fact is, is that I'm a pretty big guy, pretty tall, but the fucking secret is, I don't know how to fucking fight. But the one fucking thing that I do know how to do is speak my mind. So again, one time we're on tour in Georgia. We're sitting out there on tour with fucking Deicide. I'm looking down there and I see a bunch of these dudes, a bunch of baldies. And I'm like, oh shit, that's the fucking hammer skins. If you don't know what a hammer skin is, Google it. Hammer skins are pure racists. They hate everything. Except for their Mexican wives. They can't find a white girl to cook anything. Or their black fucking mistresses because, let's be honest, black girls are fucking sexy. So they're up there and they're looking at me. And I'm looking down at them. And I'm going, I was like, trying to pull this shit and these, the, not, well actually, none of you guys were with me at that time, but I'm looking down at our old bass player, that, or guitar player that I grew up with, I'm looking down and I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, so we're fucking death metal, fuck yeah, I was like, yeah, black people. 
people got you. Mexicans, yeah. Filipinos, yeah. Chicks with dicks, yeah. And then I was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. and then I go, oh shit, here we go. Fuck yeah, racism. Sick how, sick how, ready to go. And I look back at my guitar player, and he's like, oh my god, you're gonna get us killed. So I looked down at them, and I was like, this song goes out to white fucking power and the fucking hammer skins. There's one thing that I believe in, is the fact that you all suck dick in the bathroom, that you are all gay, and I am sexually aroused, and I want to fuck, and I want to screw you, and the fact is this, hammer skins sound fucking stupid. Maybe go to the Jews and get a goddamn fucking reduction on your foreskin. And they looked at me, and they were like, what the fuck? And I was like, white power is fucking dead. There's only one power, and it's a big high five. So needless to say, that was my 30th birthday. I'm celebrating 43. In Atlanta, Georgia, I went and stood outside and watched all these hammer skins walk out. And you know what happened? The hip hop show from downstairs came out and heard what I did, and we hung out. And every single hammer skin that came out and looked at me, and I said, hey, guess what? All their dicks are better than yours, and bigger. And you know what I did? I jumped up on that place, the masquerade, and I stole the marquee that said crematorium. And on my 30th birthday, I said, you know what? Fuck it. Hammer skills to beat my fucking ass. But the one thing that they can't fucking beat is the fact that 95.5% of the black dudes in the crowd at the hip hop show are going to be fucking their mothers at the end of the night. So, with that being said, I just probably wasted about three songs worth of shit. So, the whole thing about that is this. There's a theory called six degrees of separation. Everybody is related by something. So this thing, when I'm looking down at these hammer skins, I'm like, you know what, we're all related by something. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. When I was fucking 12 years old, I looked at my 15 year old cousin and she had these things. I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. But he was 16 and fucked my cousin. So we are actually related. So this song has to do with them. Six degrees of separation, but the thing is, is that we all forget that we're all related, that we're all bound together, and we want to just hate each other. Ah! Fuck it, stop it. Fuck it. Everyone, go to a barbecue place. If you're vegan, eat the corn. If you're fucking vegetarian, eat the corn with butter. If you eat fucking meat, eat the meat, but don't fucking eat the vegetarian. And guess what? Vegetarians are pretty fucking awesome. Vegans are pretty fucking awesome. Meat eaters are pretty fucking awesome. You know what it is? We're all pretty fucking awesome. So no hate. Stop the hate. This song is about people that degrade people for no fucking reason. This song is called Six Degrees of Degradation. <laughs>
Thank you. If you guys are down with my stories, I'm sorry. But suck it. I've been doing this for like 20 years. I always talk. Even when you guys weren't in the band, I always talk. So, there was a part where, uh, when I was growing up, I was in high school from 90 to 93. And then all of a sudden, death metal started blowing up. And I went to see Dave Paul Death and Carcass at the Palladium. Fucking packed. 5,000 people. It's fucking going nuts. Everything made it fucking. Fucking Columbia and Sony bought fucking Eric. Big money. Big money. The fucking people over there were like, yeah, yeah, let me get that fucking money. Yeah, and I was an AR for a long fucking time. I was like, yeah, yeah, no, there's no fucking money. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, we sold a lot of records, but eh, fuck it. Anyways, there was a time where it went dead. And then Slipknot came in. And Slipknot started bringing people back to heavy music. Oh, fuck that. Anyone who says fuck Slipknot, fuck you. They brought so many people back to heavy music because they were heavy and they were marketable. I saw Slipknot with fucking Hatebreed when they were nothing. Slayer opened for Slipknot. Slayer. Fucking Slayer. Put that through your head. Slayer. And I was like, God damn, hell yeah, here we go. But then we started to get some weird shit. I heard the, the first corn record, and I was like, oh fuck, that shit's heavy. But I remember seeing them in Bakersfield when they weren't heavy. I'm like, eh, fuck that shit. But then all of a sudden, we started getting bands that were just stupid. Drowning pool. All that shit. Then I heard a song that was so stupid, everyone was going crazy. And the hook was, are you down with the sickness? And I was like, sickness of what? You're not talking about killing people none of us ever did. You ain't got AIDS. You got nothing. Ooh, ah, you're fucking, what the fuck is wrong with you? Who's putting the fucking finger down? Ooh, ah, shit. The fuck? Fuck you. Down with the sickness. Shit. So my dick, I'll give you some, some sickness. Shit stripping out. You got the sickness. So me being a long time hip hop fan, I was like, you know what? No one's ever done in death metal? A beef track. No one's ever done that. Of course, when you hear me sing, you're like, fuck. Sounds like he's got 10,000 nuts in there. But go and read the lyrics, because it's a beef track. And I sent it to them. I sent it to their label. I sent it to all of you and said, hey, down with these nuts. They never answered. But my friend one time said, well, look at them. They're so much bigger than you. And they're doing so much more. So how do you have any way to talk shit about them? And I said, fuck them. Because eat my ass, rip my fucking ass, lick my balls, pull on it, and let me squirt on your face. The thing is, is that I don't fucking care. I'm at the Five Star Bar on my 43rd fucking birthday, still doing this fucking beat track. And someday I really do hope they're there. And they could look at me and be like, I got millions of dollars, and I said, I have millions of fucking respect for myself because you have been gargling nuts at the fucking major label for a long time. So this is my beef track to the fucking to those guys and all major label shit. And it's called, you ready? You ready? Here it is. On the CD it's called Testicular. But the full title is Testicular Fibros is brought upon by the insertion of Twinkies and Uri Throat Pather. It goes out to all the jocks and everyone in that fucking scene. Fuck them, fuck Ozfest, and fuck that bullshit shit. Fuck them. Thank <laughs> you. 
Howard Gill with Prosthetic Records. They signed three fucking bands. They signed Lamb of God. They saw other remains in crematorium. They put us in a fucking room and they said, we're signing you. We're gonna put major money behind you. But we want you guys to do something. Stop being your own self. Stop. Wear t-shirts from other bands. Just, you know, perform. Stop writing lyrics that are really thoughtful. Dan, stop talking on stage. We think you could be something. <laughs> Lamb of God and all our remains are something. We're not. We barely sold 2,000 records on every single album. But we are what we are. And we stand for what we stand for. And every time I talked to the owner of fucking Prostetic, he said, you could have been something. You could have been a contender. And I look at him and I said, but, and he said, you are what you are. And this is the fact that this band helped start a lot of scenes. Deathcore and a lot of shit. Back in 1991, we were doing fucking hardcore mixed with death metal. We believed in intelligent lyrics, heavy music, and all this shit. And a lot of the bands never gave us any credit. We don't really care. Two of them did. Suicide Songs and John Burke Cowboy said that we were the first ones. But we didn't care about creating something. We created about being who we were, speaking a message. And then also, when we got signed, we said, if we don't make it, we never wanted to make it. We're from fucking LA, man. I was born in fucking Highland Park. The rest of the original band was born all over the place. These guys are up here and still dealing with me. Aaron and I were living in Lancaster and started a band called Epicenia back in the day. And we were fucking struggling. Fucking Big Rob over here is still struggling. One of the greatest fucking guitar players I've ever fucking known. And he's still up here struggling. Aramis, this is his second show with us. You know how many times we practice as a band? <laughs> Fuck that, we don't practice. <laughs> no, no, we don't. They smoke weed. And I run around like a fucking tough pal of shit and talk a lot of stuff. And you know what? I'm gonna start wrapping this up, but I really hope that you guys learned something from what I talk about. I don't talk about this shit to make you guys look at me. I make I talk about it so hopefully I can connect with you. Or hopefully you go outside and you're like shit. Maybe he's right. But I'll tell you one thing. Seven years ago, down the street, I was addicted to heroin. I had, a fucking, I had a fucking needle in my vein, and I was fucking every single person that I could deal with. Panties that shared a room with me, I stole the rent money, I put fucking junk in my veins, I fucked them over. A lot of the bands that I booked still today from Los Angeles, I fucked them over. I wanted to get high. The fucking United States fucking prescription system decided that because of my back, that they'll keep putting junk in me, and then when I lost my fucking shit, I went to heroin. I'm not better than you. I'm not fucking brand. I'm nobody. You can be me. I want somebody to step up and take over the reins of this shit. Step up. If you're sitting out there and you're saying, I can do this. I can step in this place. Do it. Please. But the one thing I always realize is that I'm only seven blocks away from becoming what I was before. And you know what? I'll steal your fucking car. I'll fucking rob your mother. I'll fuck you. I will really fuck you. I see a swinging dicks and I jack the guy off. Just get high. There's no pride in that. There's no pride. But remember, you got your shit together? Two steps away. Two steps away. This song has to do with me being a fucking heroin addict. I don't regret it. I loved it. But the one thing I always do is I drive by every time I'm down here in downtown, I drive by there and I look and say, that could be me. That could be all of you. Remember, count your blessings. This song has to do with me being on heroin. I didn't care. 
by swine. All of the records have something to do. We have Epithesiums of the Dam. We have another record that came out that was called For All Our Sins. Then we have The Process of End Time. And then the new record that we wrote that we never put out because we got tired of the record business. And then, like I said, Harold, like, fuck, fuck you guys. Harold was awesome. Couldn't fuck anymore. My dick packed up its balls and took off. It's like, see ya. I was like, go ahead, dick. Don't eat your ass. But we had a whole record. And all the records, all the record did have to do with a lot of political shit at the moment. And I think it's still viable today. This song has to do with everything that we do. If you're driving down the street, you throw a bottle out your window and then a family hits it tomorrow and fucking flattens their tire and fucking dies. You do. That's not a good thing to do. If you go outside and you have a fight with somebody, you stab them, and then they die three days from now, you knew that wasn't something to do. We know what we do, and we know that there's a price. We just kind of like, eh, fuck it. I do it, shit, fuck. Eat my ass. I do it all the time. No, well, fuck it. Fuck every one of you. I'm the guy. But then I look at people that I care about, and then I think, well, if I threw that bottle out, and you hit the fucking bottle and crash and die. The fuck? Or if I, if I fucking stab some guy who sees you and fucking kills you, fuck. Come on, man. We all know that we are fucking up. I know it's not fucking really metal to say it, but fuck it. Think a little bit more about other people. Be hateful in your music and talk about shit that you want to talk about. Fuck fucking religions and fucking politics and all that, but us and other people out here. And if somebody pisses you off, hawk them over and beat their ass. <laughs> beat them down. Or, here's the best thing you can do. Hawk them over and look at them. You know what, brother? Get to the side of the road because I'm going to suck your dick. <laughs> and guess what? You might be like, oh. And guess what? You're going to end up with dick in your mouth. Awesome times. It's like a turkey with the best fucking thing. Remember that time I sucked you off? Oh yeah, Raja. There was that time you were drunk and I was drunk and I pulled it out and ladies, Raja, long and thick. Oh, and he's also got an Egyptian name that means king, king of the cocks. So this is our last song. This song has to do with all of us knowing that we do shit and we know it's gonna, it's gonna fuck with us. And I know everything that I say is gonna fuck with me at some point. And you know what? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm just a guy who drops his pants outside, in here, down the street, buys fucking shorts from someone else, smells his fucking nutsack, and says, Fuck it! I'm 43 and you're all here and fuck yeah! And this last song goes out to all you guys because you came tonight and supported this thing and helped me fucking pay my tax bill. And you came here, and you know what? You knew the cost, you know, it was 10 bucks. So it goes out to you guys, and it also goes out to the United States government, because you know what? Trump stopped fucking tweeting, and the goddamn social justice warriors stopped fucking hating, you fucking idiots. Just stand in the middle, you pile of shit. So it goes out to everybody who just doesn't know how to live.
Hail and you hate to love him, but you do. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. That was the recording.